Hello. Hey, Mr. Moore. Yes. This is Ricky Carruth at Remax of Orange Beach. How you doing? Pretty good. How about you? Good, man. Glad we missed this storm. Man, that was that was that was about that was I don't I haven't seen the aftermath, but I know it was about as bad as Ivan down here, the hit down here. Uh huh. Hey, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I I've got seven. You got eleven oh one. I've got seven oh one listed for four eighty nine. And I was uh -huh. just, I was just calling to see if there's anything in the world I could do for you. So not only am I gonna teach you how to crush the first 20 seconds of any cold call, I'm also gonna give away three signed copies of my book, List to Last. What's up everybody, Ricky Carruth here. Welcome back. If you're new here, welcome to the family. If you haven't clicked subscribe yet, what in the world are you waiting on? I'm making over a million dollars a year as a single real estate agent in Alabama and I'm coaching thousands of real estate agents for absolutely free, teaching them everything in the world that I know in an attempt to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry. All that can be found at zero2diamond.com. There's a course, a 90 day action plan and live training sessions twice a month with me right here on this YouTube channel. Tomorrow is our live training session and I'm gonna be making live cold calls. So today we're gonna to dive into how to crush the first 20 seconds of any cold call and tomorrow you're actually gonna be able to just watch me do this live. There's a link in the description below to make sure that you don't miss this live call session. So let's dive right into this first 20 seconds of the cold call, how we're gonna win, how we're gonna nail it, how we're gonna crush it, how we're gonna actually create and begin this lifelong relationship that we want out of every prospect that we possibly can. So I like to refer to this as the FE effect, okay? F can stand for friend or family, but it's gonna be the friend or family effect. Okay, we're gonna give them the FE effect. We're gonna make them feel like we're a friend or a family. We wanna make them feel comfortable. We wanna make them feel as if though they're our brother, cousin, mom, dad, sister, okay, a relative that we feel very close to. That's how we want to talk to our prospects. And we're gonna make them feel comfortable with us. They're gonna enjoy talking to us and they're going to want to do business with us. So a couple of things you need to know before I dive into exactly what to say in that first 20 seconds and the first thing is is that cold calling is absolutely not an option for an ambitious salesperson for somebody who wants to get to the top really fast exponentially grow your business you're going to have to make phone calls there's no way around it it's not an option if you want to hit your goals you have to make cold calls and if you're not making them I promise you somebody else is out there making them for you the second thing is is cold call reluctance everybody has cold call reluctance it's absolutely 100% natural I had it when I first started every single person has it I still have it just a little bit that little butterfly in the pit of my stomach right before I start making cold calls I still get that but I know because I've been there so many times before that it's part of the process prospecting is so much fun you're talking to these people you're helping them everything is actually positive even when you get cut out and hung up on it doesn't matter because the positive phone calls the people that you run into that you create those lifelong relationships with and and gain those incredible clients for life makes it all worth it and I'll tell you what I tell a lot of my students and that is that if you're unwilling to feel a little uncomfort to put yourself out there to at least give yourself a chance to succeed then you're being selfish because you know that making the calls is gonna make you successful, but you're not willing to do it because of that little bit of fear, that little bit of unwillingness to feel uncomfortable, and that's holding you back from providing better for your family and providing better for all those around you. The more successful you are, the more everyone around you is successful and everybody wants you to succeed. So when I ask people what they're scared of to make phone calls, what's their fear of cold calling, they never have an answer. They say, I don't know. It's crazy. So 
Don't be scared to make calls. It's fun and you can watch me do this tomorrow. I can't wait. So here's a few things that I don't want you to do when you're making your cold calls, okay? One big thing is agents that just talk a lot. They just start blabbing. I don't know if they're nervous or they don't know what's going on, but they just blab out a bunch of stuff. Hey, this is so-and-so with whatever real estate. I was just calling to see if you might be interested in selling your home. We sold a home. We're calling all the neighbors in the area and the house was this price for this square footage. It's on the market this many days. They just start blabbing all this stuff and the prospect 99% of the time does not care. Okay, there's that 1% chance that the prospect you're talking to does want to know all that information, but what we have to do is wait for them to ask that information. They'll let us know if they want to know all that information and then we can pour it on thick. When they hear an agent talking a lot and not giving them a chance to talk and they haven't even asked them how they're doing or respected their time in any kind of way, they're just trying to figure out how they can get off the phone and more than likely they're just going to hang up. So everything you say needs to be short, sweet, to the point, and with a question mark. That's going to require a response from them and that's going to give you some information to work with to read them. You also want to have a very inviting tone, okay? You don't want to talk really fast. You don't want to talk really slow. You want to talk very calming. Okay, you want to be straight to the point and just have a very nice, friendly tone. Another thing you don't want to do is talk about yourself a lot or your company. Okay, the phone call does not need to be about you, it needs to be about them. What do they need? How are they feeling? How are they doing? What you can do to help them. If you show them that you care about what's going on with them, then they're going to start to feel comfortable with you and they're going to start opening up and we're gonna be able to begin that relationship. So just so you know, I've made over 100,000 phone calls in my career. I'm making over a million dollars a year as a real estate agent, making cold calls. And over the last 16 years of my career, I've really perfected my phone calling strategy, what I say, why I'm saying it, how I'm saying it, and all that good stuff. So my philosophy on the first 20 seconds is there's three questions. Okay, these questions are designed to, to throw out there, receive responses, and we take that information and we can use it. Okay, we can use it to read who we're talking to. Are they happy, glad, mad, sad, busy? What's going on with them? And then we're gonna flow the conversation accordingly. Okay, on top of being able to read them, the first three questions also throws them off a little bit and releases a little tension that might be there in a normal sales call where it's all about business and it's all about you know what they can do for you. These scripts and everything I'm doing for all my coaching students is to teach you how to find out what you can do for the client, not what they can do for you in terms of a deal or a transaction. We want to know what we can do to help them right now and for the rest of their life. So the first question is, ring, 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 hello, Mr. Johnson. Okay, we're going to ask who it is, basically. We're going to, we're going to state who it is in, a, in the way of a question. Okay, so it's going to say, ring, 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 hello, Mr. Johnson. Okay, so it's short, sweet, to the point. We're not gonna say, is Mr. Johnson there? We're not gonna say, you know, is this Mr. Johnson? We don't wanna say anything long. Remember, we want everything short, sweet, to the point. So we're gonna say, Mr. Johnson, and wait for a response. We're gonna see if this is Mr. Johnson we're talking to. We're trying to get the right person on the phone. So if they say this is Mr. Johnson, we're gonna flow with what I'm fixing to tell you in a minute. If they say this is not Mr. Johnson, we're gonna say, okay, cool, is Mr. Johnson there? We're trying to get Mr. Johnson on the phone. Once we get Mr. Johnson on the phone, or maybe he was on the phone from the beginning, he says, yes, this is Mr. Johnson. We're gonna go into our second question. Okay, we're gonna introduce ourselves and ask the question. So we're gonna say, hey, Mr. Johnson, this is Ricky Carruth down at Remax of Orange Beach. How are you doing today? Okay, so the second question is, how are you doing today? It also introduces ourselves. okay? So it's ring, 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 hello, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, this is Mr. Johnson. Hey, Mr. Johnson, this is Ricky Carruth down at Remax of Orange Beach. How are you doing today? You see how my tone is? You see how I have a friendly demeanor about how I'm saying this? And I'm talking very clear, precise, to the point, confident, calm, um, powerful, okay? And we're trying to give that FE effect, that friend or family effect, to make them feel comfortable. So they're gonna say, yeah, I'm doing good. Now they could say anything right here. They could say, I'm doing good, I'm a little busy, what you got, how'd you get my number, who is this again? They could say all kinds of stuff, okay? We're gonna flow the conversation from there. But once we've established wherever we are in that part of the conversation, we're gonna say, I got you. Well, look, I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous outside? This is our third question. 
Now, a lot of agents get this third question mixed up because they say they don't feel comfortable talking about the weather or whatever their excuse is, but this is a really crucial question, okay? Because we're not diving right into the business part of the call and it's really releasing a lot of tension that if you go straight for the business, that tension is still gonna be there and they're still gonna have a wall up. But if you can take one more stab and loosen them up just a little bit more and get some more information about how to read them and how to make them feel comfortable, all the better. But here's the cool thing about the weather part of the call. That question doesn't have to be about the weather. It could be something about football or baseball or a holiday or you know something going on in the news. It could be anything going on in the current events of the world, of the local, you know, whatever. It could be something going on other than the weather. I like the weather because everybody can relate. And you wouldn't believe how many conversations I have about the weather. We'll talk for 10, 20, 30 seconds about what the weather's doing, what it's gonna do tomorrow, what it did yesterday. And it really creates a really nice flow for the conversation. So these are the three questions. We're gonna ask them who they are, we're gonna ask them how they're doing, and we're gonna ask them, aren't they enjoying the day? And you can tweak this as you go. Tomorrow when I make my calls, you're gonna see me using Thanksgiving, are you ready for Thanksgiving, stuff like that. I may use that for the first five or 10 calls, see how people respond. If it goes good, I'll keep using it. If not, I'll tweak it or I'll do something different. So it's whatever you feel comfortable with and you're getting the right response. Don't be scared to tweak it a little bit. So once we get through these three questions, okay, who they are, how they're doing, and whatever that third question is, after that, we're gonna have this little conversation about whatever it is and then here comes the awkward part of the call where there's silence we don't know where to go okay this is the this is a beautiful part of the call because we're going to use our first transition the transition is I got gotcha. you well look I don't want to take up too much of your time today but okay that's a transition that you all have to get down okay as soon as it comes to that awkward point part of the call be ready to say I got gotcha. you well look I don't want to take up too much of your time today but a house down the road just sold, a house just listed, a house just went under contract, and I didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. Okay, so we're not asking them if they want to buy or sell. We're giving them some market information, but we're not giving them all the market information unless they ask, and we're respecting their time. Okay, this is how you nail the first 20 seconds of a real estate cold call. And this is how you do it every single time. Thank you so much for watching all this video. I hope it really helps you understand how to nail the first 20 seconds of your cold calls. If you wanna download my full scripts, you can do that at zerotodiamond.com. Just go there, start a free account, download the scripts, and there's all kinds of educational stuff there. Like I said, there's a course, a 90 day action plan, and the live training sessions twice a month. Definitely don't miss the live call session tomorrow and right now I want to give away three signed copies in my book list to last all you have to do if you want a copy is follow my Facebook page and subscribe to this YouTube channel links are in the description for that just comment below done I'm gonna pick three winners over the next couple days and if there's anything in the world I can do for you reach out anytime we'll talk to you soon